Hey guys, welcome back to my page and my channel. So I thought um, I'm actually waiting for um, a participant in my study. So I'm waiting to meet uh, with, up with someone. And I thought that since I'm waiting and I have a few minutes, probably about, I don't know how long, how long this is going to take. Hopefully not that long, but in the meantime, I figure while I'm waiting, I can do a quick video and talk to you guys about the birds and the bees. When to talk, when is it appropriate to talk to your kids about sex? And I'm going to give you guys some time to sign on so we can get into this topic. And I just don't want it to be a one-way discussion. So if you guys would like to chime in, feel free. We'll see how it goes. If not, you guys can just look at me talk. <laughs> I have a few things to say while I'm waiting. I find it to be quite interesting how some, I mean, you have mixed perspectives on this topic. Some people say that, okay, you should wait till a child is the appropriate age to talk to them about sex. And then you have some people that say, oh, no, I think you should talk to them as soon as possible because if you don't, People out in the community will. People um, in school, you know, in the neighborhood, they're going to get the information from somewhere. If not there, on television. So it's like, why not go ahead and just go ahead and have that discussion with your kids about sex? But I think it's not so much about when as it is how. I think that is the biggest issue here. How do you talk to your kids about sex? So you guys, um, feel free to chime in and I'm going to give you guys a few minutes. I'm trying to see if she's going to call because I'm actually like, I'm out in the hood, you guys. I came to, out here from Hollywood and it actually didn't take me that long to get here. It's a nice neighborhood, by the way. I mean, it feels like the hood because um, we took Crenshaw to get here, Crenshaw Boulevard, but... I mean, it looks nice to me. It looks nice and peaceful. And you guys hear the birds chirping in the background. <laughs> so I felt like, hmm, while I'm out here and I have some time on my hands, I can talk to you guys. I'm kind of just checking out the scenes. I've never been in this neighborhood before. This is my first time here. And I'm at this park out here in the neighborhood. And there's no one out here. I'm like, I'm the only one here. Where, is, where are the kids? <laughs> Nobody's here. But hi, guys. I want you guys to chime in because I'm on. It's not. I'm not going to be here that long. I'm pretty sure because I'm not going to be waiting out here that long. You know, I'm waiting on my participant. As you guys may or may not know, I'm in this, my second year of a PhD program, working towards my doctoral degree in clinical psychology. And as part of that requirement, I have to conduct a study, which I created. So I designed this study to assess um, acculturation and black identity development in African-American caretakers, parents. Um, and actually, hi, thank you, Neva. So I'm looking at black identity development in parents and also looking at acculturation, those two constructs, and looking at how that um, affects implicit racial bias in children. Implicit racial bias is implicit because it happens on a subconscious level where people aren't necessarily aware um, of those types of biases. So, and especially at that age anyway, you know, talking about preschoolers, four and five-year-old five year little kids, you know, they aren't necessarily aware that they may have a bias towards a certain color or a certain race at that age. So, basically, you know, I'm in the data collection phase of my study where I'm going out into the community um, targeting African-American parents and I'm getting them to um, provide me with some information about their cognitive uh, processes, their perspective on certain aspects, so, so certain social aspects um, that basically feed into these constructs of black identity development and um, African-American acculturation. So I'll talk to you guys a little bit more as my study progresses, but that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. I'm actually waiting on my first participant because today marks the first day of my data collection. So cross our fingers. It's actually, I'm meeting with two participants actually. So this should be quite interesting. 
And um, I said, in the meantime, while I'm waiting, because I actually got here a little bit early. Like, I'm kind of an early person anyway. So I got here a little bit early, and I figured, okay, while I'm waiting, I can just kind of talk to you guys briefly about the birds and the bees. And more specifically, when and how to talk to your kids about sex. Um, if you are a parent and you're watching this video, like comment below and let us know, like what has been your experience, you know, raising your child and we are, okay, give me a second, you guys, sorry, <laughs> I think that is her and she's saying she's going to be here in three minutes, great, you're sending a reply, sorry guys. Sorry, guys. Um, so that was my participant. I talked her up. But let's see. I may have a few minutes. She said she's going to be here in three minutes. So I think it's a really difficult um, topic, I guess, because people have been conditioned. People have been socialized to believe that it's a taboo topic. Like, you're not supposed to talk about it. You know, but we know sex is everywhere. Sex is definitely heavily promoted in the media and magazines television commercials like you see it everywhere it's hard to ignore it. and even when we're talking about media that affects little children like cartoons and these even the commercials like kids watch commercials they see they're exposed to these images they're exposed to when we see commercials where we have adults kissing you know up on each other it's like people we are People, those kids are exposed to that at such a young age. They pick up on subliminal messages even at a very young age. And parents are somehow concerned. They're worried. Like, how do I break the news to my little one? You know, or should I? Should I even be having this conversation? Because some parents are like, this kid is too young. This kid should not be talking about sex. Should I be thinking about sex? You know, they take more of an abstinence approach approach to it and they're like you know i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna have this conversation like even gonna open this can of worms with my kid because that is probably going to make them want to have sex and i don't want them having sex so think in the perspective of a parent who does not want their kid to be having sex and believes you know that their kid should be married you know wait till marriage and so after they graduate high school and they go off to college and graduate college you know and then they get settled and buy a home and start their career and it's like okay then they can think about sex and then we can have the conversation so some parents actually think that you know where realistically it's like what good is that you know because if you don't have the conversation with your kids it's this is just something to consider right something to keep in mind that if you don't have that conversation with your kid about sex then just imagine the amount of influence that they are under when they go out in the world and they are exposed to all of these different messages, these images, you know, about sex from everywhere and like from every angle, you know, it's like, it's hard for them to escape it. You may try to shelter them, you know, and keep them guarded against all of these things that are out there. But I mean, it's really impossible for you to do that as a parent. You know, so it's everywhere. It's in, especially in advertisement. I mean, you just look at billboards, you see it sexually suggestive messages, you know, even in billboards. So the thing is, is like, at what age do you begin? You know, if you're going to have that conversation, if you're going to be a more of a proactive parent as opposed to reactive, because here's the thing it's like, if you don't have that conversation with your kids, it's going to come at a time where you are going to be forced to, you know, and it's going to be more of a, more of like a reactive conversation where you feel like, okay, now I'm, I'm forced to do it because now your child is pregnant, you know, and you're like, okay, now we have to have the conversation at the point when your child becomes pregnant. So it's like, you're a little bit late parent, you know, you are a little bit late here, you know, they, they've been new. You know, they've been out there, you know, and they've been exposed to it, apparently. You know, if at the point where you just, just not having a conversation with your child about it, at the point when they become pregnant, it's like, you late. So, I'm thinking, okay, what about taking a proactive approach to it, where you actually have that discussion with your child when they're young, and just make it more age-appropriate. You know, so if you're talking about 
elementary school age, which I feel is not too early to talk to kids about sex. Because I remember when I was in elementary school, we were having a conversation about sex. We had sex education even in elementary school. You know, like they had um, visitors who would come to our school and would talk to us about um, STDs and prevention and how to basically be protected and we're like in elementary school having this conversation comment below if you guys actually had that conversation at your school in elementary school but we did and now granted at elementary school for me i wasn't thinking about sex i still thought the boys had the cooties even in i think middle school yeah it wasn't like to high school that i actually started to think about myself and having feelings you know and wanting to have sex but in elementary school, it's like, no, even throughout middle school, it's like not even a chance. So I don't know, but I, I think I still was exposed. I, I knew about it because I would see people, you know, like my classmates, they would talk about it. And you, BET was big back then. Like we're talking about, I grew up in the 80s, you know, in the 90s. So BET was big, music video. So it's not like I wasn't exposed to it. I just didn't have an interest in it. That wasn't my focus because I was too young. But these kids nowadays, like, okay, I'm out in this video. So I will catch you guys later. Sorry, you guys, I have to end it so abruptly, but I will make a part two. So thank you guys for tuning in. Catch you guys in a few. Bye.